an assault style uh, rifle. Um, you know, and it's, it's, what's even more troubling is this same nonsensical, undefined terminology has been repeated by this government when they refer to the, the May 2020 uh, Modern Council military style assault weapons that they, uh, that they want to prohibit. Um, now, G4, in my opinion, was a failed attempt to redefine what makes a firearm prohibited. Um, you know, and, and which included, you know, semi-automatic hunting rifles and shotguns. And as uh, my, my colleague, Mr. Lloyd, has said that a gun should be classified on what it does, what it's capable of, not by what it looks like. So, Dr. Bryant, uh, with your expertise in this area, can you, can you set the record straight for us? Um, for Canadians who don't know, what is an automatic firearm? Are they legal in Canada? Uh, when were they prohibited? Uh, what is a military-style assault weapon? Um, and do you think it's ludicrous that a government would invent a term and then try to find a definition for it, including firearms that might fit into that definition? Okay, thank you. So, uh, first of all, fully automatic firearms are firearms where when one pulls a, the trigger, uh, the con firearm continues to discharge as long as there's ammunition. So basically what most people would call a machine gun. Um, those have been illegal for private individuals to have since 77, 78, the approximate uh, year. And uh, there are a tiny number of people who still own them uh, because they were grandfathered at the time, uh, but those people are now extremely old. And so... Um, well, even older than me, so I call that extremely old. Um, then the, uh, your question about the, what would be a, uh, an assault style firearm would be a fully automatic firearm with, uh, that fires an intermediate power cartridge. So the original assault rifles like the uh, German Sturmgewehr or uh, the original fully automatic AK-47s, those are uh, assault firearms. Um, now, assault style uh, takes it a remote uh, step back and basically they're suggesting anything that looks like that. Uh, but you can take, you can buy kits because some people have different tastes. You can buy a kit that will make uh, a rifle made 150 years ago look like um, one of those uh, military-style uh, assault firearms simply by changing the stock, putting some accessories on it. So I'm, I'm not sure that I got all of your question. It was fairly long. So we've heard the government talk... Uh, sorry, we've heard uh, Dr. Bryan and the government speak about military-style assault weapons. Is that what you're referring to when you define them as... a? Uh, uh, one pull of the trigger, continuous fire until they're out of ammunition. Um, so th that's that's what they say they're trying to prohibit. Have they hit the mark with their prohibitions in this country, or, pro or proposed prohibitions that they're banning military-style assault weapons that really doesn't exist, don't exist anyway legally? Well, what I defined was an assault weapon. The term, as I suggested, mil military-style is. Uh, you know, it's sort of like being, is, is that a modern style of a suit or a modern style of car? It's sort of, it, it's, it's much in, is in the eye of the beholder. And so it's a pretty much a meaningless term. Uh, and so it is, as you've uh, suggested before, somewhat ludicrous for, to create a term and then create a definition to try and match that term. In your opinion, uh, Dr. Bryant, will prohibiting um, hunting rifles and shotguns as was previously planned in G4, which the government is still trying to find a definition for of the firearms they want to prohibit, and that were listed in G46, will that have any measurable, even with the full list that they had provo uh, proposed initially, will that have any measurable impact, a uh, positive impact on public safety in this country? The short answer is no. The slightly longer answer is what's important is not what kind of a gun someone has. It's whether they're allowed to have a gun at all. 
And that's why in Alberta, we have focused on improving our screening process, including having subject matter experts on spousal violence, uh, including uh, greater training on a wide range of factors to ensure that anyone who gets a firearms license uh, deserves to have one, and why we are uh, ramping up our staffing to ensure prompt your attention to any cases that those rare cases where someone who has a license uh, becomes a person who shouldn't have a license that we can follow up on that promptly in order to ensure uh, public safety.